Hello. Today we're going to be talking about port forwarding. Port forwarding allows remote computers, such as public machines on the internet, to connect to a specific computer within the LAN. Common ports for this are port 80, 22, and 21. Port 80 is tend to used for a HTTP web server, 22 is for secure cell access, and 21 is for FTP access. What port forwarding mostly does is forward the packets that come into the router's forwarded port as well as the need to rewrite them so that the machine to which the port forwarded can reply to the original source address, which in turn leads to the inability of the destination machine to see the actual originator of the forwarded packets and instead see them as if originating from the router. So what you're pretty much doing here is you're hiring a full-time traffic cop to come into your router and direct all traffic that comes through a certain port to go to a certain IP address. This usually works best if you're using a router, because if you're not, this really wouldn't, uh, everything, all the packets would come straight to you. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go get right into this. We're going to go ahead and log into our router, which will, you can find this in your user-specific manual. Our routers are different, so you definitely want to look this up. But most of them could be 192.168.1.1. Then you're going to have to log into it. Your user manual comes with a username and password. It tends to be default by admin and blank but mine already has one, so I'll log in with that. So the first thing you're going to see on your router is you'll have to look for the place where you're going to do the port forwarding altogether. In this case, it's going to be under Applications and Gaming. Now this uh, has a lot of fields of information. It's a little overwhelming at first if you've done something like this, but it's not very hard to do. First thing you want to do is pick an application. Now this is not specific to, it doesn't matter what you type in for this part. It doesn't matter at all. All you need to do is write something down that you will remember, such for uh, for the sake of use, for what I'm going to use, I'm going to use my address client as my port forwarding uh, example for this. So let me go ahead and punch in the name for that. All right. Now, most applications have a default range of ports, the, the port range that the application uses. You can find most of these online at portforwarding.com. You can find uh, the range. Azure has its own range, which you can actually pick anything between, I believe, 20,000 to 64,000. Anywhere between those ranges are valid ports. So I'm, I picked a just completely random port. Doesn't matter for this at all. I'm telling it to start at port 51,329, and it's going to end at that same port, which means all traffic is going to be redirected to that port. Now this is the part where you have to do a little bit extra work here. Now what you're telling the router here is anything that comes in through these ports, well in this case just this one port, is going to go to this IP address that I'm about to punch in. So for my IP address I choose dot one thirty three. Any traffic that comes under this port is going to go straight to this address. This is exactly the point of port forwarding, so that you can get traffic directly between you and a client out on the internet, uh, a server on the internet, pretty much anything you'd like to do on the internet to be honest. So all these will be taken care of. You hit enable and you've pretty much got a set. You'll definitely want to make sure you're using the proper you know, techniques and the proper port range for applications because some applications are very specific. You don't want to put uh, a port range that's invalid for your application. Some come with preset ports that you can't actually alter. In this case I have a lot of freedom to change the ports as I see fit. But a lot of applications don't allow you to do that. Mostly gaming applications do that, which is why they actually have gaming written on this, because that tends to be what people use this for, mostly for hosting games and such as, you know, things like that online. So after you punch that in, you want to save your settings, which is actually off screen, so you can't see it. Settings are successful. Hooray. So continue. Now the next thing you need to do is how are you going to make that your IP address? How are you going to be 192.168.1.133? Right now I've got an automatically assigned IP address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my network places. I'm going to go to uh, my machine. And I'm going to look at my local area connection. Oh, wow, I've been on for a long time. Now my current IP address is 192.168.1.100. Now, the specifics for my router is I have a setup so that you can only assign up to 10 IP addresses starting at dot .100. So I can't actually give myself dot .133 right now, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway, so you can do it yourself. What you do is you go to your local area connection, you go to your properties, and then you go down to the TCP IP protocol. You want to look at the properties for that. This is where you get to put in a static IP address. Now, this is all things that we learned in class, if you're taking the current LAN class. You don't want to run a command prompt and do an IP config all. From there, you'll get all the vital information you'll need to fill in these fields. 
I'm going to go ahead and fill them out for example sake just so it's not confusing. I tend to do the DNS servers first just because they're easier to handle. You can see those two right here. It tends to give them two, sometimes it gives up to four, it depends on what kind of network you're on. So I'll go ahead and put these fields in together. Oops, missed. Yes. For the IP address, that's where you put in the one that you would like to actually have. You put that in. Subnet mask, I think we know plenty about that. Default gateway is our router number, which is right there 192.168.1.1. You go ahead and click OK, and all those things will go into effect once you hit the close button on this tab. But for my sake, well, let's go ahead and do it anyway. So I scroll things up, but it doesn't matter. Now, assuming everything went smoothly, everything on this port is going to go directly to my new IP address. This makes things incredibly easy for uh, hosting games, uh, using uh, torrent sharing files, uh, anything you see fit. It's a, a great way to help your computer speed pick up. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of ways uh, you're not allowed to do certain things because you need to have port forwarding set up and a lot of people avoid it because it's very difficult. It seems overwhelming at first, but it's really not too hard if you just uh, take the time to study it, look it over, make sure you're putting the right ports, and if you make a mistake, just go back and try and fix it. You know, don't give up on it. So, yeah, I'm very, I've been uh, doing port forwarding for a good while now, a couple months, I'd say. Uh, I'm very glad I actually know how to do it. It's, uh, it's a nice piece of information I'd like to pass along to you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, Nothing really else to say. Just hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy port forwarding sometime soon.